Hi everybody, this is Alice Bejeweled Hedgehog, and I'm just here for a short little vlog. <laughs> okay, um, let's see, what have I been up to? I have been hot. I have been way too hot. I was watching C. Watts, you know, and talking and hearing her talk about how hot it was in Atlanta. Um, her husband had called and had said that the temperature on the, I guess, the car thermometer or whatever was 108. Okay, it did not get that bad here. We only went up to 101, but that was enough for me. 101 and humidity was just way more than I could take. That was on Friday. And this whole weekend has been a nasty, hot, muggy, ugh. So anyhow, yeah, I stocked up on groceries Friday evening and um, didn't really go anywhere um, this weekend. I was supposed to take <laughs> take the girls skating um, on Sunday because normally I take them to their Sunday morning skating lessons. But we had those really big storms come through here on Friday night and there are whole areas that are without power. And the ice skating rink is one of them. So it's shut down, obviously, because it has no power. And this is kind of sad, it's really not funny. The ice rink is melting. So I'm sure when the power gets up and running, they'll get it fixed. Um, and her neighborhood has a lot of trees. Um, and uh, they always, anytime there's anything, winter storm, summer storm, they always lose power. And they knew that when they moved in. So when they moved in, um, they had a generator put in. It's not in the house, it's out in the yard, and it's this big boxy thing. It's one of those things where it runs off your natural gas lines and when your electricity goes out it automatically kicks in and they have it set up somehow so that it will run appliances and some lights but there are other things it doesn't run for instance it doesn't run the dishwashers etc it's some real high-tech thing you know that can detect what's on what circuits and anyhow um, so they have power but most of their neighbors don't unless they have generators so the house is full of people. Their house is full of people escaping the heat. Um, my nieces had a whole bunch of little friends having sleepovers. They think this is a big party, you know, because it just means they get uh, sleepovers with lots of friends. And um, their refrigerator and freezers are stuffed with other people's food. So I just decided to stay home today and piddle around and relax. And I'm very lucky because... Um, I didn't have my, my power went out for a while on Friday, um, Friday night, and it's a real pain when power goes out in the high rise because the water has to be pumped up, I guess with, well obviously, with the electrically run pumps. So I lose water every time I lose power. Um, and uh, I mean I do, you know, I keep some bottled water in hand and um, I keep a bucket in the bathroom that I fill up with water when I know there's going to be storms so I'll have a little more than just in the tank what's in the tank to flush with so you know I did okay um, I, we did better in in this small immediate area than we've done in some of the previous summer storms I didn't lose cell phone coverage um, I had insomnia Friday night which was a pain because I was up during the power outage and also I was up when we didn't have water even though the power was you know okay because um, oh, well, the, the the power went out I guess at some of the water pumping stations so you know the, the water itself was out for a while on Saturday I mean on Friday night and of course I couldn't sleep and I got on the internet and various things weren't working so blah it was just kind of blah but anyway, this has been a nice relaxing weekend. I've slept a lot, kind of caught up from the insomnia, done an amazing amount of piddling. Um, Kelly, I'm going to be sending your package, uh, your art swap package out, um, sorry, out tomorrow. And um, let's see, I owe a package to Z, and um, Z, I just have to 
get the necklace and get it mailed, maybe throw in something else, you know, a little goodie or two. Um, and Jen, Jen, I went through like a <laughs> creative jewelry block, but I am working on your bracelet um, that is uh, for Rose Elizabeth. So anyway, I am actually getting things done, huh. kinda. Um, anyway, Yeah, so it's just been a piddly weekend. I didn't have to do a lot of um, chores because until noon today they had water restrictions because of that power outage at the whatever pumping station thing. So, um, you know, you weren't supposed to run dishwashers or lawn wash machines. Hee hee. I didn't have to do my laundry. So anyhow, I just took it easy. Okay, enough about my piddling. What have I been doing? Um working on various little projects. I am working on a birthday present. Um, I know it's hard to tell, but this is going to be a little dress. And I was working on it um, yesterday, and then I decided it really, really, really looked way too big for, I mean, it probably is still going to be a little big, but I had forgotten how loose my tension was. Um, and it was way out of the size for the, the intended target age. So I kind of had to rip it out and start all over again. But aren't those pretty colors that you can't really see in the... Yeah, you can. You can see the differences. They're, they're really pretty. Really like them. Um, so this is my little um, quickie birthday gift, which will be late, but it will still get there. And it's okay for kids' stuff to be a little big, I think, because kids grow very fast. And also, you know, it can be a dress or it can be a jumper. So if if she happens to reach the size that it fits in the middle of the winter, then it can just go on, you know, over like a little turtleneck and a little pair of pants or something. So, yeah. Um, that's what I try and keep in mind, actually, when I make kid clothes, because um, my sister used to have problems. People would give her clothes for the girls because, you know, so many people love to buy girl clothes, but it wouldn't be the right, the girls wouldn't hit the right size for the clothes during the right season. So if she got all this thick wintry stuff and they didn't hit the size for it, you know, whichever one it was until the summer, then it kind of had to get put aside for another one to potentially grow into or just kind of given away, which is kind of sad. So I like to make things that could be summery or wintry. So, you know, anyhow, I am rambling again. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, oh. I have been <laughs> working on, um, I had, to, I think I showed this in a previous vlog. <laughs> this is so funny. I was working on this on and off all day yesterday, and I got so frustrated. I was having fun, but then I got really frustrated. I have found this box from Amazon, and what I plan on doing is putting this up and using some paper to kind of hold it like that, and it's just going to be a book that wraps around and will, you know... I'll put a little fastener of some sort here. And what inspired this was um, uh, a comment that Dale Kwan made when I was throwing things out, which, you know, basically said, um, art is a journey. If you throw stuff away, you lose your memories. So obviously, a lot of people said, don't be dumb. Don't throw your stuff out. Well, they said it nicer than that, obviously. But I, I got the point, and I decided I didn't want to throw things out. So I started off just playing around with tons and tons of acrylic color, which was amazingly fun because I haven't done, you know, playing with art, I don't think probably since elementary school. And then I kind of, um, I put tissue paper over, um, even with the gesso and the layer of paint over it. This is an Amazon box, and for some reason, whenever anything comes to my apartment complex, they write my apartment number and date on it in big magic marker. I mean, not the mail, the um, front desk people, you know, to make it easier to spot when they put it on their shelves to hold it for you. So it has all these, these big marker marks, and the Amazon markings cover it up very quickly but the marker written stuff didn't. So I stuck tissue paper on it, and then where it still showed through, I wadded up yet even more tissue paper 
and added some fabric and I kind of tried to make it look like um, it's like holes being torn in my you know memory journal I mean in my mem you know my art journey so I'm kind of losing memories and I'm trying to patch it up again and little butterflies are just flying through my little personal landscape and um, you know the blotchiness is just kind of supposed to make it the brown blotches and I don't know if I like the overall look of this at all this is one of these things I'm just going to sit back I'm not close to being done what happened was I was playing around with this so much I realized oh I haven't even gotten started on my art journal my challenge journal so I'm going to put this aside you know until I get that underway and then just keep playing with it but it's coming out really funny because if you notice there are some hot air balloons on it and yes they are upside down this is how they're supposed to be <laughs> I was so frustrated when I realized the way I'd had it laid out on the table I did my stamping and I stamped it upside down and then I thought about the you know the whole thing about painting it over and then I just decided, you know what, upside down air balloons really is kind of the way my life so often goes. So yeah, you know, I, which way is up and I'm never entirely sure. So I decided to just leave it like that. And so this is what I spent a lot of my weekend time playing around with. So now I am going back and working on my um, challenge journal. And what I had wanted to do for that, of course, was bind a book and cut out all the pages and blah, blah, blah. And I realized, you know what, I really do want to start it today. And since I spent so much time on other projects this weekend, well, I spent the whole week buying <laughs> supplies. <laughs> and then I spent this weekend um, piddling around on other things. So today I decided, you know what, I have one of those composition books um, that people use for smash books, the um, hundred page things with the black and white covers, and I'd already guess, gessoed or gessoed, I don't know the correct pronunciation, um, gessoed the covers um, as soon as I got my gesso just to, you know, see what it was like. And I said, you know what, I am just going to use that. Um, because I can get into these modes where everything has to be perfect and I have a really really hard time just letting go and it was really hard for me to let go of the idea that yeah I could spend you know the first part of the, this week binding a book um, or I could just grab this thing that is already gessoed paint it up put on some stamps and some stickers and be set to go and that's what I decided to do. So when I show my um, art smash journal thingy, um, that's what it will be. And it's just simpler and easier and um, it's going to be fun and I'm not worrying about producing a hand-bound work of art, which is a good thing for me because I, I can get a little weird. So. Um, Let's see, cool stuff to show you. Oh, yeah, I knew there was something. I've, <laughs> I've just been looking at this little bottle of perfume that's on my coffee table and like, why did I put that there? And then I realized, oh, I wanted to show it to you. Okay, this is my latest order from Wiggle Perfume. Oh my goodness, it is so wonderful. Okay, um, Wiggle Perfume I've talked about. Wiggle Perfume and Veggie Beauty I think are my two favorite perfumers. Um, I like to go sniff the unusual scents of Demeter whenever I'm in Sephora with my nieces, but they're a big company and they're kind of interesting, but it's not the same thing as an individual person. And honestly, I don't think their scents are as nice. So this one is called Ro Rose Alba. I don't know if it will focus properly. And this is amazing. She does wonderful things with scents. Um, I have another one of her rose-based scents called Frida Fondle, and it's like rose and fresh, kind of like rose and lime. It is a kind of rose scent that you can wear in the summertime without smelling like somebody's grandmother in a sauna. And then this is her, her latest rose-based scent that is not overwhelming. And this is a light, fresh, rosy scent with mint. And you put the, I can wear this today in this unspeakable weather, and there are very few scents 
other, you know, I mean, you can put on the typical citrusy stuff, you know, a citrus body splash or something, but there are very few things that I feel I could get away with in oppressive heat and humidity. And this is one of them I will stop sniffing it <laughs> on the video. So I will put a link to her Etsy shop down below. And um, this is a light scent. Her scents tend to be light. And what I like about the perfume oils is with a spray, sometimes it's very hard to control how much goes on. And with sprays, it's sometimes easier to spray a Kleenex and then just pat the Kleenex, you know, against yourself. Um, this is easy because you just hold it upside down for a minute then you can put like one little tiny dab and it's much easier to control the amount with an oil so even a scent that you might consider heavier you know like a musky or vanilla -y or some kind of scent like that um, really is much more doable if you get an oil so i am rambling about smells again so anyway um yeah, stormy, hot, lazy weekend, getting, uh, recovering from my insomnia by more or less sleeping through the whole thing. Looking forward to next week. Next week has 4th of July and a little mini vacation. And, um, I really need to cut my bangs again. I'm always saying that, you know, and then I just keep sticking it up in my little clip and ignoring it. So anyhow. Uh, maybe this evening or maybe tomorrow I will go ahead and show you my um... <laughs> I'm losing it my challenge journal okay everybody have a great night oh and I am planning on showing my new car in a video as soon as it gets cool enough that I want to stay out there for any you know additional time right now all I do is like run out and stay out there as long as I only as long as I have to so anyway good night everybody